Hello curious people, today we have another exciting video for you. Today we will review an SDRG controls project that involved building a series of custom displays for a customer that performed pressure testing. They requested that the displays accept two channels, have features like variable scales and storage of peak values, and fit their existing equipment rack space. Of course, they wanted the displays as low cost as possible, and they wanted it to look and work similarly to a previous display that was no longer produced. While all of SDRG's projects involve custom control programming, this project involved the design and production of custom hardware as well as software. We met with the customer to review all the display feature requirements and the operation of their old displays. The old displays were very unreliable and no longer available, but the customer wanted the new units to look and function as similarly as possible. After much discussion, SDRG proposed a custom hardware solution that used a microcontroller and new circuitry that would meet their needs at a price that was acceptable. Come along with us while we walk you through the process. We'll look briefly at the components used and then demonstrate operation. To accomplish the design, we reviewed components that would provide the features desired. Shown here is a drawing of the circuit developed and the various sub-assemblies developed and the connectors between the assemblies. The design centered on a low-cost microcontroller integrated circuit that SDRG determined had the hardware and programming capabilities necessary to accomplish the task. Shown here is the printed circuit board SDRG developed and had custom made for the displays. The board has room for the microcontroller, the serial programming connection, the video output, the analog to digital input chip, and various power, filter, and support components. Here is the board with sockets, components, and connectors installed. The microcontroller and analog to digital IC were inserted when the unit was ready for programming. The 9-pin connector provided a programming link. We used a small 2x16 LCD display, shown here, to provide a readout to the user of the current pressure. The display was also used at power-up to display the unit's serial number and scale configuration, as well as the customer's logo. On the rear of the display a secondary board was included to provide a serial interface that would accept messages to display on the LCD screen. The display also included an LED backlight. A front plate was produced that provided mounting of user input switches and viewing of the display. The plates were anodized aluminum to provide an attractive appearance, and labels and logos were etched. A window was provided for viewing the LCD display. The back plate was also constructed of anodized aluminum, with mounting holes for the two instrument connectors, as well as a user output of the signals. Labels and logos were etched for information. Here is the back plate with the connectors and power jack installed. A test signal is connected to the low channel pressure input. Finally, the enclosure shown here was used to house the electronics. A section of aluminum tube provided the body. The front and back plates screwed to each end of the box. When all the sub-assemblies and faceplate mounted equipment is connected together, the assembly appears as pictured. The assembly is then installed in the enclosure and the front and rear faceplates screwed in place. Power is supplied by a 9-volt supply connected by jack to the rear faceplate. A program is entered into the microprocessor before the enclosure is sealed. The program is downloaded using the internal serial port. The program converts the high and low channel voltage inputs to scaled PSI values for display, stores peak values, and respond to the user input switch selections. When powered up, the unit first displays its serial number, then the programmed high and low full scales. After power up, the unit then displays the selected channel's pressure reading. Here a test pot is used to raise and lower the signal on the selected 500 PSI low channel. Next, let's look at the peak function.
When the peak slash clear switch is pressed down, the stored peak pressure for the selected channel is reset to zero. Once the peak slash clear button is released, the unit resumes normal operation and continuously displays the pressure for the channel. As the pressure rises and falls, the unit stores the highest red value in memory. When the peak slash clear button is pressed up to the peak position, the highest pressure red for the channel is displayed. This value remains until a higher value is recorded, or a reset for the channel is selected. A final feature of note is the CAL switch, which sends a calibration check signal to the pressure instrument for the selected channel. The unit can be switched to the high channel for all the same features for the second pressure transmitter. Thank you for watching another one of SDRG Controls projects. We hope you enjoyed the journey. We appreciate your suggestions and comments. Please give a thumbs up to like the video and please subscribe to be notified when a new video is released. If you have any automation projects, whether big or small, please give us a call. Thank you.